welcome, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. First of all, can we just appreciate that I have just made this my complete self? It was actually filming a brand deal for HelloFresh. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I cannot believe that I just made that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm gonna be having a chat with you guys whilst eating this. Considering it is Eating Disorder Awareness Week, I thought it'd be very fitting to do an eating disorder Q&A. I haven't done one of these in literally, I think like four months, which is a very long time considering I used to do them all the time. That's very embarrassing. No ketchup literally just came out. First of all, I just need to do a little taste test, guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, it's so good. Look at that. Got chicken with like sriracha and honey and halloumi, mayo. Oh my God. Mmm. Guys, that's so good. I can't even. Wow, wow, that is another level. I've also just realized it's gonna be really hard to eat the burger whilst talking to you guys, so please excuse me if I literally just keep eating the whole time. Let's get straight on into the questions, guys. What was your first step you took to recovery? Obviously, it's different for everyone. If you feel like you can go all in, and if you guys don't know what all in is, I've done loads of videos on it. I did a whole all in Q&A and what I eat in a day whilst all in and stuff. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I can't get over how good that is. Going all in for me was what literally saved my life and what was the biggest step for me and what helped me the most. Although that wasn't my first step because although that's always what I wanted to do, I knew that I wouldn't be able to go straight into going all in, right? If you feel you can go straight into going all in, that would be absolutely amazing because that is the thing that helped me the most. But obviously it was very overwhelming and the idea of having to literally honor every single hunger cue, whether that's mental or physical. For me, mine was extreme mental hunger because I think when you've restricted for such a long time, your body kind of just gets used to it, which is awful. And so it has to give you other ways to show you that you're hungry, which mentally for me, I would just crave literally absolutely everything all day, every day. It would be, oh, I really want this. I really want this. I really want this. And it would be things that I would deem as bad food or like that, you know, is a treat or something. So yeah, the first step for me was actually just increasing my calories. A lot of people used to comment on my videos, this isn't recovery. And I completely know what you mean because I was still tracking. I was still eating low calorie versions of everything. I was still very much affected by food. But I think that in order for me to be able to have gone all in, I had to still track my food and I had to just slowly, gradually increase my calorie intake. So I'm what gym people would call reverse dieting, is what I would do. So I think I increased my calories by like 50 every week for like a good few months, which was terrifying, don't get me wrong. But it basically just got me used to eating more food. Mmm, can't get over how good this is, guys. And I don't mean like getting my body used to eating more food so that I didn't gain as much weight. It basically was just so that it wouldn't be from one extreme to the other, right? Although actually I know I was under eating even when I increased the amount of calories I was eating. It just got me used to having breakfast, lunch and dinner and having snacks and that sort of thing, you know, rather than actually only allowing yourself a certain amount of food. That was my first step. And also along with that, I do also have to say that I tried to start to recover about six times and on my own, I just couldn't do it. I really couldn't. And my mum really did have absolutely no idea what I was going through or anything. She knew that I was like dieting and like, she probably knew I was under eating, but I don't think she realized that it was like causing me lots of stress and like it was as serious as it was. And so until I actually explained that to her and that I do actually want to recover and that I kind of need to tell her to keep me accountable, there was then almost no going back. Cause even on the days then when my mum knew and I would still try and like cut corners and restrict food because we would agree on a certain amount of calories that I'd eat per week. You know, she'd kind of keep an eye on me and if she noticed that I hadn't hit those calories, she'd like bring me up on that. For me, if she wasn't there bringing me up on that, I would just get away with it and then that wouldn't actually be making any progress. Although it would be absolutely awful to go through and it'd be so hard to make a decision on what I should eat and if I'm doing the right thing by eating all this food and stuff. It just had to be done in order to become free and actually live my life and be able to think about other things other than just food. Mm, I was just missing out on so much like this burger. Mm, food makes me so happy. I made that answer so much longer than it needed to be. Basically, slowly but gradually was increasing my calories. It was really hard and very traumatic, but also the more you challenge yourself, the easier it becomes long term. I feel guilty for eating, but I want to recover. But I'm scared of gaining weight and people noticing. Okay, I completely understand this one. You're worried that the people around you have got used to you with this body. I think for me, the way that I used to think is that they're gonna think that I've given up or that they're gonna think that I'm not strong-willed enough or that I've become lazy 
crazy and that they think I'm like becoming unhealthy and all this. I don't know if that's how you feel, but for me, I used to think like people are gonna think that I'm become this like big slob if I start gaining weight and that, like, all this, right? Mm -hmm. But the actual truth is, guys, is that first of all, fuck what everybody else thinks, honestly. In this position, you need to remind yourself that this is your journey. This is your life. Nobody other than yourself knows what you've been through and knows how big of a deal this would be to you, right? You need to keep reminding yourself that you are literally doing the opposite to what you think other people would think, right? The reason you'd actually be gaining weight is to become healthy and you will be putting in more work than you ever have in your whole life you should be commended for that and you should give yourself a pat on the back that you even want to recover and that you have got this mindset where you're aware of what's going on and that you know something needs to change right and I also do want to say that I really really truly believe that people around you will not think anything bad about you gaining weight I completely understand that society makes you feel like having a smaller body or looking a certain way is attractive and people will like you and people think like you look better if you look this way but if people genuinely have something to say about you gaining weight in a negative way, people like that should love you at any weight. Weight does not matter. If you are seven stone lighter or seven stone heavier or anything, it really, really doesn't matter. As long as you're healthy, that should be everybody's concern, right? And genuinely, that is how everyone would see it. You know, it can be quite triggering for people to say and like comment on how you look. I can like assure you that probably 99.999% of people will think good for her, like she is killing it and she looks great and she's smashing it and I'm so happy for her. There will honestly be such a small percentage of people that think badly about your weight gain and if they do then they've got such a small uneducated mind and that has nothing to do with you and absolutely everything to do with them and that shouldn't stop you from wanting to gain everything back that you gain from weight gain. Does that make sense? How long did it take for you to reach your set point slash extreme hunger to settle? I think it's a really good question because when I was struggling the most and when I was debating whether to recover, this was definitely a question that I would want to know the answer to. My extreme hunger lasted for a very long time and that shouldn't put you off. It just means eating more yummy food for a longer time. I'd say my extreme, extreme hunger lasted about three months and then I would still say that I had quite a high amount of hunger for maybe another like, maybe another like six months after that but not to the point where i was eating like 10 days worth of food in one day just the point where i was kind of probably eating like double what an average person would eat i hate saying that because everybody's different and there isn't a certain amount of food people should eat i'm gonna say from what i'm eating now i probably ate like double what i'm eating now for another like six months after my crazy extreme hunger so I'd say it is definitely a slow, gradual process. And then again, everyone is different, right? Some people's extreme hunger could last three years. Some could last a week. You literally don't know. And that was really scary for me that I thought, oh my God, I've been eating eight to 10,000 calories every day for like two months now. When is this gonna stop? I think the most important thing throughout recovery is trusting your body. Because your body's not stupid, right? The reason you get such extreme hunger and why you need to honor that is because you've been restricting for however long, right? Your body needs to make up for that. It needs to make up for past restriction. And if you don't listen to that, you are never, ever, ever, ever gonna get rid of these thoughts, right? If I elongated my extreme hunger, and didn't listen to absolutely every single mental craving, physical hunger, mental hunger, craving, whatever, then I would still be at the point that I was maybe a few months into my recovery right now, nearly like two and a half years later. And so I can only thank past Brooke that I literally just said, do you know what? I am so full physically to the point where I could literally be sick and I look like I am six months pregnant. I can honestly say if I ate so much food that I genuinely felt like I was going to throw up, that my brain was saying to me, I could really do with a chocolate muffin right now. You bet your bottom dollar I was going to the shop and I was getting myself a chocolate muffin because it was just what had to be done in order to be free from this life. These wedges are just incredible. Mm. I would also would say that my set weight also was about the same time that my extreme hunger kind of properly went down. So probably about this time last year, to be fair. So probably like a, a year and a bit into recovery. Yeah, I kind of been in this body for the last year and I don't think I've really changed. I mean, I don't weigh myself or anything, but I don't really think I've like gained anymore or lost anything or whatever. But yeah, a lot of people can gain a huge amount of weight and then actually lose some weight. And that could be completely unintentional. It's just that your body sometimes thinks that it needs to 
keep eating and eating even when you've kind of made up for all your restriction because it thinks that it might be restricted again so it keeps thinking oh she's given me all this food let's eat all up because she might restrict me in a couple of days or something keeping tabs on that and honoring that because else your body will go into restriction mode again mm. when will my weight redistribute it's all gone around my belly that is so so normal i think that's the first thing to remember and there's nothing wrong with even if your weight doesn't redistribute and that is just your body composition but for me i definitely do remember that i had very a very poofy face for a very long time and I don't really particularly re remember when that kind of changed. I think it's when I got to like my set weight and my extreme hunger kind of properly settled right down. So probably like a year and a bit, but I I think I definitely did have a very poofy face for a very long time. And it's actually quite funny looking back, but I wouldn't worry too much about it being on your belly. I think that just makes it cute. You've got a cute little tummy. Nothing wrong with having rolls, girly pop. You've got this and you look stunning no matter how your body looks. Just giving love to yourself in the form of feeding yourself with whatever you want is such a beautiful thing and your body does so much for you every single day you deserve to just listen to yourself because it does so much for you right treat yourself like somebody that you love if five-year-old you wanted snacks would you say no if you would that's really mean i'm guessing the answer is no do you still ever have hard food days slash thoughts? And if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I would say the answer is actually yes. I don't want that to scare you off. Something I've heard somewhere is that recovery takes double the amount of time to how long you had your eating disorder. And obviously that's gonna be different for everybody, but I'd say I had my eating disorder for about two and a half years. And that's five years to fully recover if we're going on that basis, right? So that means I'm halfway through recovery, which is really exciting. Happy two and a half years, guys. It doesn't bother me that I still get these thoughts because the thing is, I've had two and a half years to work on that. And if I get a thought, it has no meaning. I don't listen to those thoughts anymore. What is the greatest, most powerful feeling ever is actually having these thoughts come into my head and me literally ignoring it and knowing what's right and doing what's right. Just because I get the thoughts doesn't mean I struggle with them as such. Sometimes, you know, I might have more thoughts than others, but just knowing how to deal with them and that it doesn't worry me anymore if I get the thoughts because I know that they don't mean fuck all to me. They're literally laughable. I'm like, lol at you, you're getting freaking ignored, ED brain. <laughs> How do you accept your new body? Someone asked this on my Instagram the other day, so I'm sorry if you follow my Instagram and you saw a similar response to what I'm about to give, but it's just the honest truth. For me, obviously my new body is quite a lot heavier. I think when I last weighed myself, I was like five and a half stone heavier than what I was at like my lowest weight. Mm -hmm. That five and a half stone that is gained, I don't know how much I am now, but however much I have gained, I do not see that as weight gain. And although weight gain is has nothing wrong with it, but I think when I was struggling and couldn't come to terms with the fact that I gain weight and that gaining weight was what was going to be happening. Constantly reminding myself what weight gain brings me makes it such a better topic to think about. Realizing that weight gain isn't literally just gaining fat or getting heavier on the scale, but realizing what it brings for you, right? So weight gain has brought me 100 million trillion times better mental health. It has brought me so much more energy. It's brought my personality back. It's brought me happiness and joy and things that I would never have seen happiness and joy in. It's brought me motivation. I had no motivation. I had no energy. I'd stand up and literally get tired and have to sit back down. It brought me stronger nails, stronger hair, my period back. Guys, losing your period is no joke. I know some people don't want kids, but for me, having kids, that was a huge thing for me. The thought of like not being able to have kids because I hadn't fueled myself correctly was terrifying. Like losing your period for a certain amount of time can be so detrimental to your fertility. And I'm just so glad that I know what was right and I stuck to that. It's allowed me to have food freedom. Oh my God, if you guys are struggling, you'll know exactly what I mean. When I tell you from the moment I woke up, from the moment I went to sleep, I was constantly drained thinking about food. It is the most time consuming, emotionally draining thing ever to have to constantly think about when you're gonna eat, what you're gonna eat, how you're gonna eat it, shall I eat this or shall I eat this or whatever it is, anything to do with food, constantly, constantly, even if I'd just eaten, still thinking about food because you're still mentally hungry, you're still restricting, weighing myself 
40 times a day. Oh my God, I don't even have a scale anymore. Like I literally, as soon as I got into recovery, I threw out those scales. They were not a necessity in my life anymore. They're not your friend when you have this mindset, guys. They're not your friend. They honestly tell you nothing beneficial. And if you go for weigh-ins or anything, do not tell yourself that you actually do want to know and that you're fine with knowing because you're not. It will only make it worse. I actually can't remember where I was because my boyfriend just rang me. <laughs> it allowed me to be more social, actually enjoy times when I'm going out and not have to stress. I would literally sit there and watch people eat an obscene amount of food and I think I watched every single what I eat in a day that there is on any social media platform. Every single 10,000 calorie challenge, 20,000 calorie challenge or man versus food. I'd eat, I'd watch every single one of them and like I couldn't just relax. When I was relaxing I was thinking about food. Honestly guys there's so much more to life. So much more to life. You can plan fun things with your friends, with your family, on your own. You can form so many more strong connections. You can actually find joy in things and you can actually enjoy and make the most of your life because you do not have to be skinny to be pretty you do not have to look a certain way and all your issues will just disappear that doesn't happen it doesn't happen my issues got a hundred times worse when i lost weight and you will never be satisfied i lost so much weight and i'd be like when i get to this weight i'll be happy and then i get to that weight when i get to this weight i'll be happy when you get to that weight when i get to this weight i'll be happy because you get this adrenaline rush because you think that losing weight is good but it's not okay maybe in some cases it is for people that are unhealthy but if you're healthy, absolutely no one on social media should set any standards that you feel like you have to meet. You are good enough and you're beautiful enough just the way your body wants to be. You do not need to look a certain way to be attractive or for people to love you or any of this. Do you want to look back when you're however old and realize that you've lived your life the way that you have and that you haven't actually lived your life? Because I honestly don't know about you, but I was alive, but I definitely wasn't living. I am alive and living and thriving and striving and glowing and everything else in between y'all what's going on with me why am i american all of a sudden bloody hell it's like little heinz placement here guys trust me even if you do get to that weight that you've told yourself you want to get to and then you're really happy or whatever to maintain that is gonna be hell you've got to break the cycle before it gets too late and when i say before it gets too late one it's actually a deadly illness right yes it's a mental illness but it does have physical effects it's not worth it. The burger's too yummy not to eat, guys. You need to listen to that. And the other way I mean until it's too late is that until it's too late to turn around because you can get to 40 years old and still be struggling and that's just your way of life. Think that your way of life is to live like that your whole life and to get to like older and you're a mum, you still feel like this. That's just really sad to me. And I just think everyone deserves to be able to live the life that they want. And surely nobody wants to feel like this forever, no? Like or at all. I feel like I'm rambling and I'm not even making sense right now. But honestly, if you've been struggling since you're say 16 and then you get to 40, what's that? 24 years of struggling. To then come back from that, it is possible, but it's gonna be a trillion times harder than if you nipped it in the bud as early as possible. Stop waiting, I'll get to this weight and then do it. It just gets harder, you're making it harder for yourself and you deserve to like thrive and you're not gonna be able to thrive whilst you have this lifestyle, guys. Guys. And I just really hope the best for you guys and I love you all so much. You're all so beautiful the way you are and it makes me upset that you have this opinion on yourself and that you feel like you have to be a certain way to be happy or to have self-validation or validation from others or whatever it is that's making you want to do this. I'm sorry. Please know that it's so worth it. It's so, so worth it. On the days that you don't feel like it's worth it, think of me on your shoulder, a little me, telling you it's worth it. Everything you gain from it, it's just like... You won't regret it. You won't regret it, I promise. You're so strong. Keep smashing it alive, babe. Don't give up. The more you challenge yourself, the easier it becomes. Short term, horrendous. It's hell in there. In two years time, in however long, you will be thanking past you that you worked incredibly hard and you stayed strong through the toughest days of your life because honestly, they were the toughest days of my life. I genuinely, I can say, hold my hands up, I've been through so much, so much shit and I worked and worked and worked and I didn't give up I didn't give up and it was horrible and I didn't want to be here but I knew it would be worth it you have to trust yourself always always trust yourself like your body knows what's happening and it's right okay anyway I love you guys please check out my other videos like comment subscribe and I'll see you in my next video girlies I love you Mwah.